Hi, we're here at the round table and we're here to talk about Dunkirk. Nailed it. <laughs> the traditional thing in Hollywood movies is to cast you know, 28, 29 year olds, 30 year olds uh, and, and pretend they're younger. We wanted to cast people of the right age. We wanted kids who would experience these events uh, the way people would have at the time. And it was very important to us to find interesting, fresh faces to do them. I think it was important to shoot on location to give it the film a perspective and to give us a perspective. I wasn't on the beach with the boys, but mm. that must have been amazing. I was coming out onto the beach and there was like 1,300 extras all dressed in battle gear. There was Spitfires flying overhead, destroyers in the background, the beach was set dressed, sandbags and trucks and everything, and there was explosions going off in the sand. And it was just so real. You know, you can never really put yourself there, but that is, I think, the closest you can come mm. to putting yourself in that situation. And the pure panic and terror so vulnerable. So fun. I mean, from, from every aspect as well. Mm. You know, sitting ducks on the beach, sitting ducks on the water, sitting ducks in the air. Mm. You're yeah. just so exposed, you've got nothing to shield you. It's not, you know, pretend there's an explosion happening over here, it's actually going on. And then I think, you know, that just means you get natural reactions to stuff. Yeah, any reactions you have are just a response to what's going on around you. It's just kind of honest. I never actually felt like I was thinking about acting because everything was there for you. There was kind of no acting required in many situations with, with everything that was flying around your head or no, exploding. And then you get this bloody spitfire going across your head and you're like, oh, okay. We're Jack. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Any day. He's on me. I was up in the air over the channel um, with the Spitfires. They strapped the IMAX to the wing of the plane that I was in and flew it over, swooping over the channel with a massive IMAX camera on the wing. The thing with the IMAX is just it, so epic. And I think that's with Chris's films. He does that so well. He captures that huge, vast picture, mm. which just sucks you in. It's like a black hole that mm. just pulls you in. He wouldn't be doing the story justice if he, if he no. shot it on anything else, yeah. your favourite thing about working with Chris? Yeah, it's funny you ask that, Finlay. Uh, he leads by example so much. He's like the, the first one there, the last one to leave. Very present. Yeah, very hands-on. Yeah, I was always told about, like, if you were to ever do a film, that you'd hear the directors shouting the directions from about three miles away in a tent. Mm. But, you know, Chris is there the whole time. You see the camera there and Chris there, so. Literally right beside it, the little <laughs> monitor. Yeah. These huge sets and there's kind of, you know, real Spitfires and warships all around you and all the rest of it, thousands of extras. The ship's about to leave! The scale of this was absolutely massive. I think the general public are in for, like, an epic suspense thriller mm. based within the framework of historical background. They're going to watch, like, a... Yeah. ...some sort of intense movie. It just doesn't give the audience time to think. You just plunge straight into nah. this world and you're just kind of swept along in it. Just and you're just stories, taken yeah. taken with you. You see this world through their eyes and ears. And that story really needs to be told. It's a film of, of survival and, pan and panic. It's breathless. I think it's going to be bloody brilliant. You can practically see it from here. What? Home. <laughs> <laughs>